Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and before we get into this episode, I wanted to do a little PSA and remind you that I put out multiple shows a week of Old Time Radio Westerns. You can check them out by going to otrwesterns.com or looking up OTR Westerns on your podcast application of choice. We are releasing over 10 episodes a week so far, about 100 a month. So definitely want you to check that out. Again, otrwesterns.com and check it out. I also wanted to invite you to check out my sister podcast site, OT Netcast, and that's N-E-T-C-A-S-T. So O-T N-E-T-C-A-S-T, Netcast, otnetcast.com. We're currently releasing mystery genre shows, and this is shows like The Shadow, Escape, Suspense, and The Whistler. And we have plans on bringing other shows to the network for you guys to listen to. So it's my non-Western old-time radio channel that I can kind of do other genres that not only I like, but hopefully you would like too. You can check us out by going to otnetcast.com or searching O-T-N-E-T-C-A-S-T on your podcast app of choice. Now let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be The Adventures of Wild Bill Hickok. Original air date is February 6th, 1952, and the title is A Trail of Vengeance. Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals, presents Wild Bill Hickok! Hiya, folks, hold on to your hats and pass those Kellogg's sugar corn pops. Because here comes Guy Madison as Wild Bill Hickok and his pal Jingles, which is me, Andy Devine. We got another rootin' tootin' Wild Bill Hickok adventure story for you from that great new cereal with the sweetening already on it, Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pop! Yes, today, Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops brings you Wild Bill Hickok, transcribed in Hollywood and starring Guy Madison as Wild Bill and Andy Devine as his pal Jingles. In just 30 seconds, you'll hear the exciting story of a trail of vengeance. Boys and girls, if you want something good to snack on after school or while you're playing or reading, just dig into that big yellow box of new Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops. Sugar Corn Pops are mighty good any time of day, and good for you, too, so you can eat all you want. Now, let's join Wild Bill and Jingles. Spreading respect for law and order throughout the Old West led United States Marshal Wild Bill Hickok and his faithful deputy Jingles into many a rough and tumble adventure. The day they walked out of the Dodge City Barbershop and rode west, they suddenly discovered they were riding a trail of vengeance. All finished, Jingles? I sure am, Bill. I've been shaved and scraped and curried down till I almost look human. Well, then I guess we can hit the trail west, partner. Yeah, I hope Joker doesn't have trouble recognizing me with this new haircut and pretty stinking. You know, he never did care much for the smell of bay rum. Well, he'll just have to get used to it. There, there. Now, you see? Hold still, Joker. It's just me. Now, there. Take a good sniff. Steady, (laughs) Buckshot. All right, let's go, partner. We don't seem to be in much of a hurry, Bill. You sick or something? Nope. For once, we're not in a hurry. Where are we headed? For the Laramie Mountains. Laramie? Why, that's in Wyoming. That's right. Colonel Custer wrote me a letter. Wants us to come out and act as scouts for some of his supply trains out there. Oh, now, Bill, you know what scouting for a supply train of freight wagons means. We'll be up to our necks in ornery trappers and bandits, renegade Indians, and balky mules. Hey, Jingles. You notice that rider up there ahead of us? Sure, we've been slowly catching up to him. He keeps looking back like he thought we were after him. Well, maybe he's got a guilty conscience, Bill. Well, let's ride up to him and put his mind at ease. Yeah, or find out what's making him touchy. Hi, right, Buckshot. Pick him up, boy. Hi. Come on, Joker. The wind will blow some of that bay rum out of my hair. Hey, Bill, that Jasper's pulled a six gun. Oh, now what's that for? Well, I don't know, but I'm going to teach him a lesson. Oh, Jingles, hold your fire. But he's running away. All right, let's get him. Spread out, partner, and run him down. Hi, Buckshot. Hi! Jump, Joker! You heard what Bill said. Ha, ha, ha! 
Maybe we can talk this thing over. What do you want with me? Just a little explanation. You know, when I get shot at, I'm curious about the reason for it. What got into that galoot, Bill? What was he shooting at us for? But we're just getting around to that, Jingles. All right, mister, start talking. Look, who are you? Who are you, he says. Seems you might have found that out before you started fanning that hog leg, mister. Yeah, you don't know how lucky you are. That's Wild Bill Hickok, and I'm his faithful deputy. That's the team you just... Hold it, Jingles. Hickok. Oh, what were you following me for? That was your first mistake. We were heading west, not following you. Oh, well, then I, I reckon it's me it's off the reservation. Yeah, I reckon it is. So far off, I can't see you for dust. Uh, I'm Jim Breton, and I'm headed home to... Well, if you read this letter I got my brother Bob, you'll understand a lot more. What's it say, Bill? It says, uh... Pa's dead, you better come home. From Dodge City on, you better tie your hat down. I'm thinking Pa didn't go the right way. Well, now that's too bad about your Pa. What's the rest of it mean? Well, that's Bob's way of saying he figures Pa was killed by somebody. And by tying my hat down, he means to keep my eyes open or get shot. Then that's why you thought we were after you. That's right, Mr. Hickok. Sure glad I didn't hit you. Well, where do you live, Jim? Right through this gate up there. Almost made it before you caught up to him. Hey, that's shooting. Was up at your ranch, Jim? Yeah, I better get up there. Sounds like something's wrong. Yeah, well, it's trouble. We'll see you later, Jim. Oh, no, Jingles. Come on, we'll go up there with him. Oh. Come here, Buckshot. But Bill! Hey, come on, take him in. Hit him. Hey, Buckshot. Oh, get along, Joker. They can't leave us behind. Hey, Bill! Look, fogging over the hill beyond the house. The two riders. Wonder what that means. Yeah, maybe they did the shooting. Better look around that side of the house first, Jim. Here, side porch is around here. Hold, lady. Oh. Ooh, ooh, stand there, Buckshot. Oh, dog on it. We'll never get the Larmy this way. Bill, they're on the porch. There, there's a man laying face down. Yeah, partner. Who is it, Jim? It's my brother Bob, Mr. Hickok. Help me turn him over, Jingles. Bill, those dirty polecats. Jim, looks like we came too late. Your brother's dead. Howdy, partners. Here's your old pal Panhandle Jim saying... You never saw a happier wrangler than me right now. Because I just finished up a whole mouthful of Kellogg's new sugar corn pops. Oh, no doubt about it. Sugar corn pops just can't be beat for flavor two ways. And one way is the way I was just eating them. Just like candy. Right out of the box by the handful. The other way is out of the bowl with milk in the morning. And you don't need any sugar... Because Kellogg's sugar corn pops are already sweetened for you. Golden hearts of corn all popped up, crisp and crunchy and plenty tasty. Yes, sirree, by Jingo, I'll bet my boots and saddle, just like me, you'll say you never enjoyed better eating. Now, let's hum along with this humdinger of a song we got for new Kellogg's sugar corn pops. Sugar pops. They're sugar coated, tastes so sweet. Just pour on some milk. Mm, boy, they're neat. Kellogg's sugar corn pops. Sugar pops are tops. Now, sugar pops, you know, are sweet. But cowboys know there's an extra treat. Right out of the box, take a handful out, pop them into your mouth as you run about. Kellogg's sugar corn pops. Sugar pops are tops. When they heard the shot echoing from the Breton Ranch house, Wild Bill Hickok and Jingles joined Jim Breton in rushing up to find the reason. They found Jim's brother, Bob, lying face down on the side porch, dead. If I hadn't pulled that fool's ton of shooting at you, I'd, 
I'd have made it here in time to stop this. Now, don't go blaming yourself. No, that won't do any good. You got any idea who could have done this, Jim? Yeah. Yeah, but I ain't saying. Why not, you featherhead? Don't you know Wild Bill Hickok is just the man to tell about it? That's just the reason I ain't saying what I think. You'll have to explain that, Jim. You're the law, Mr. Hickok. That's right. If I told you, you'd go a-looking for him. I'd rather do it my own way. Well, now, that's what I call being a mule-brained idiot if I am... Well, he is! Makes no difference. That's the way it's going to be. You're making a big mistake, Jim. You know, many a man's ridden a trail of vengeance and found a noose at the end of it. You think I'm going to let a couple of sneak-thieving coyotes kill my pa and my brother and not do anything about it? Tell me what you know and let the law handle the killers, Jim. No! I'm getting these buzzers myself. And if you do, Bill and me will be hunting you down for the killing. Well, you'll never get me. Now, go on where you were going before I met up with you and leave me to my business. Why, you stubborn critter, you want to be locked Come up. Come on, Jingles. <laughs> we'll have to go report this to the sheriff in the next town. So long, Jim. <laughs> Kill Bob Britton, you say? That's right, Sheriff. Yes, they did. And if you ask he me... He didn't. No. Now, keep your eye out that window, Jingles. No, all right. But what am I looking for? Just keep your eye up the street. And if you see Jim Bratton coming to town, let me know. Oh, you expecting him, Hickok? I don't know what to expect, Sheriff. Did the Brattons have any known enemies around here? Oh, well, not that I know of. Old Jed Bratton, uh, Jim's and Bob's paw, was well thought of in these parts. Quite a jolt to all of us when he died. Now, just how do you know he died, Sheriff? How do you know he wasn't killed like his son, Bob? How do you know, huh? Jingles. Well, now, Bill, I don't see... Jingles, you get back to that window. Oh, oh Bill, there ain't nothing up that street but two old freighter wagons and a... Uh-oh. Well, now, well, now, look at that. What do you see, partner? <laughs> hey, would you look at that pretty girl under that pink parasol? Woo-wee. Hey, Bill, I'm going to like this town. Jingles, you're looking out for Jim Bratton, not pretty girls. Well, doggone it, I can't help it if my eyes bug out at a, well, just a little bit at the sight of a cute filly when, well, can I? Gee whiz. See, now, Mr. Hickok, now that you got me to thinking, I do seem to remember that there was some bad blood a year or so back between the Brettons, old man Bretton, that is, and uh, the Mallet brothers. Mallet brothers? Who are they? Oh, they're a pair of sutlers... And you got a shop up the street. Uh, they've been selling supplies to the army. And the mallets had a row with Jed Bratton. Well, uh, not so much row. It, it just got to be known around that they wasn't exactly speaking to each other no more. And uh, they used to be friends. Bill! Yet. Bill, you were right. Look passing by. Well, oh, I say, that's, that's young Jim Bratton now, heading up the street. Yeah, where do you reckon he's going, Bill? You say the mallet store's up that way, Sheriff? That's right. Don't suppose he's going up there to start a ruckus, do you? All I know is that Jim Bratton's looking for a pair of killers. Yeah, and if he thinks he's found them, you can call the coroner because he's going to start shooting. Come on, Sheriff. We better get up there before the fireworks begin. Nah, nah, don't rush me, Marshal. If we're too late and the deed's done, no need to fret because I'm also coroner in this here town. <laughs> Oh, lady. Oh, stand, gal, stand. Oh, I got a feeling I won't be long. We've got some real riding to do. Who's there? Who are you expecting, Bull Mallet? Oh, it's young Jim Bratton. Sure it is, Cass. What about it? What is it? Just shut up. Yeah, Cass, shut up or you might give yourself away. Is that what you mean, Bull? I don't know what you're getting at, Jim, but I ain't liking your tone. Then I put it plainer. Somebody killed my pa a while back. Yesterday, my brother Bob was shot. I got reason to believe you two sidewinders killed them both. Bull, he's got what? a... up, Cass. You got no proof of what you say, Breton. I said I got a reason. Pa left a letter with his papers. Says that he knew you two mallets were selling stuff to the army, then stealing it back and selling it to him again. Bull, I told you that old coup. That was a lie, Breton. It was reason enough for you to kill him. Now I'm giving you a chance that you didn't give him or Bob. Two against one. Draw your six hands. No. No. Draw, I said. Bill, they're going to shoot it out. Hold it, Jim. That's the chance I wanted. Well, now, I never saw the beat of that for shooting. Hickok, 
You got Cass in the shoulder and a square hit on Bull's gun. All right, holster that gun, Jim. I thought I told you to keep out of this, Hickok. Why, you ungrateful pup, after Bill saved your skin from being ventilated, you're giving him back to him? I said I'd handle this my way, Hickok. And I'm going to get those two coyotes if I have to put you out of the way first. Now I'm leaving. Bill, you're letting him get away. I've got no reason to hold him, partner. Sheriff, you better get Cass over to the doctor. You're going to pay for this, Hickok. Yeah, we was just protecting ourselves. Breton come in here and pulled a gun on us. Now, that ain't so, Bull Mallet. We saw him give you a chance to draw as we was coming through the door. Yeah, with odds two to one against him. Yes, sir. Looks like he figures you two are the killers he's looking for. We didn't have nothing to do with the killings. Maybe not. But I'm out to find out who did before young Jim Bratton makes a big mistake. And if you two varmints are guilty, you'd better get under something, or we'll be coming after you. Yeah, you better have proof and come a-shooting. I don't aim to be took by you or nobody else. Bill, well, what do you figure to gain coming back out here to see Jim Breton? You know he don't want no part of us. He went after the mallets for some reason, Jingles. Yeah, but he won't tell us what it was. I'll bet my new set of spurs on that. Maybe not. Besides, both ends of this argument is threatened to get us if we don't quit meddling. There's been some killing done, partner. That takes it out of the meddling class and puts it under our business. I know, but this is a moonlight night, and I make too good a target when there's shooting going on. Then let's prod these ponies along a little faster. Come on, Buckshot. Let's get there. Come on. Come on, Joker. Bill, I feel like I was riding right down a rifle barrel. And I don't like it one little bit. Oh, Buckshot. Oh, Joker. Now, Bill, this is no time to stop when somebody's shooting at us. Where'd those shots come from? Could have come from anywhere. Jim Britton's ranch house is right ahead of us in plain sight. Well, the mallet for this could be hid up there in those trees. Yeah, and I could be back in town sleeping, too. Bill, let's do something instead of standing here asking for a chest full of lead. I thought maybe they'd shoot again. Well, now, that's something I can do without. All right, let's go into Bratton's. I'm going to get the answer to this mix-up if it's the last thing I do. Come on, Richard, let's go. Back. Well, I'm praying for that this ain't the last thing we do. Hi, but I ride for it, Jingles. Yeah, but where to? Now those shots are coming from three directions. Both sides and straight ahead. Any way we go, we're asking for a reservation on the Blue Hill. Jumping jackrabbits, Wranglers. I gotta check my chuck wagon. Make sure I got plenty of new Kellogg sugar corn pops on hand. I got to digging into my sugar corn pops so fast during the show, I'm almost plumb fresh out of them. That's just a good idea for you, too, man. Better make sure you have plenty of Kellogg sugar corn pops on hand at your ranch, too. Because you eat up sugar corn pops two ways, fast and often. Out of the box like candy and out of the bowl with milk. They're so downright delicious, you just can't help going after them lickety-split. So if your supply is low, you better gallop down to the store first thing tomorrow and load up big. Just look for the big yellow boxes of new, even sweeter Kellogg sugar corn pops with the pictures of Guy Madison and Andy Devine on front, and you'll be all set. Now, here's our favorite song. Yippee! Sugar Pops. They're sugar-coated, taste so sweet. Just pour on some milk. Oh, boy, they're neat. Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops. Sugar Pops are tops. Now Sugar Pops, you know, are sweet. But cowboys know there's an extra treat. Right out of the box, take a handful out. Pop them into your mouth as you run about. Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops. Sugar Pops are tops. While Bill Hickok and Jingles were trying to keep young Jim Breton from taking the law into his own hands and avenging the death of his father and brother. But as they rode up to the Breton ranch, thundering rifles fired on them from three sides. Bill, we're boxed in! Ah! 
right for Jim's ranch house, Jingles. But Jim's shooting at us from there, too, Bill. Swing around behind the barn. We'll go on your own in foot. I wish that man in the moon would go off and play hide and seek. Yeah. Now we're getting out of his line of fire. Oh, but shot boy. Oh, Joker. Now what good's this gonna do us? Leave the horses here behind the barn and walk up to the house. Maybe we can make Jim listen to reason. Come on now and be quiet. Well, he ain't been very reasonable up to now. I know you're out there. I hear you. I'll get you two mallets. You're not killing me, too. Jim. Billy thinks we're the mallet brothers. Now, Jim, listen to me. You better listen, you ringtail mule head. We ain't the mallets. This is Wild Bill and Jingles. Hold your fire now, Jim. I want to talk to you. Get out of here, Hickok. It's between me and the mallet. Jim, we were followed up here. You're going to need some help. Now, we're coming in, so hold your fire. But, Bill... Come on, partner. Oh. All right, Jim. Host that six-gun. I got no quarrel with you, Hickok. Jim, why'd you go after the mallets? Of course, Pa left a note in his papers that said he knew they were stealing stuff from the army and selling it back to them. Stuff they sold the army in the first place? Yeah. Bill, that's enough cause for them mallets to try to put Jim's pa out of the way. You figure Bob found that note, too? Sure. So they kill him for the same thing, and I'll be next if I don't get them first. Then that's who was following us. Come on, out the back way. I ain't running from him. We've got to set a trap for him. Now, come on. Hey, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Take those soft pillows and stuff them in your jacket and another pair of jeans. Oh, I get it. You'll need a pair of boots and, and your sombrero. Then put it all in this chair like, like this with its back to the door. That's right. What? That looks just like I'd go to sleep in the chair. Well, now, that's just what we want them to think. And if they do, we've got ourselves a couple of killers and kept you out of the calaboose, Jim. Come on, now, out the back way before we get caught in our own trap. <laughs> This is far enough. <clears throat> you suppose we got Hickok with them shots, Paul? I don't know, but I'm more interested in getting Jim Button shot up before he spills anything. Yeah, we gotta find that letter his paw left. Yeah. But what if Hickok got here and found out about that letter? We better just hope he didn't, that's all. Now be quiet, we gotta sneak up to the house. Well, yeah. there ain't no more shooting. Maybe they're all dead. I ain't looking for that much luck. I don't hear nothing. Keep that gun ready. We'll go in. Oh, the dead blasted door. Shut up. Now look sharp. Huh? Nobody here. Britain got away from us. Oh, look in the moonlight from the window. Hmm? Jim's in that chair. Don't no, move, no, Britain. Shoot him, Bull. Shoot him quick and let's get out of here. Yeah. Let's run before anybody chances around here. Yeah, that was easier than I thought. Jim Breton ain't gonna tell nobody nothing. Wait, Bull, that letter. We gotta find that letter. Yeah, that's right. Now, there's the old man's desk. Take everything and we'll read it later. We can't risk a match. Yeah, but... well, what if it's hid someplace else? Don't talk so much. Just grab that stuff and let's get Bull, somebody's got... Well, I don't reckon we need to ask you to drop your gun. Just stand right where you are, gents. Well, Jim, I reckon you were right about those two mallets all the time. Jim? But Jim was in that chair. I reckon... You I... thought you just shot him, huh, Bull? Light a lamp, Jim. Show him you're alive. Yeah. <laughs> Throw a little light on the subject for these two low-life salamanders. Bull, it's him. And look, you shot a dummy in that chair. Yeah? Took a dummy to catch a couple of dummies. <laughs> Bull, looks like you and Cass put your own heads in a noose this time. That dummy looks like one of your tricks, Hickok. It sure was, you night-crawling varmint. And the other trick that's going to help convict you two coyotes is still in Jim's pocket. The letter you were after. All right, Jim, you can help us take these two back to the sheriff. Mr. Hickok, I, I sure want to thank you. And I, I'm sorry I acted like a local maverick with a thorn in its foot. That's all right, Jim. All right, now, you two gents, move along. You missed your letter here, but, well, I'll write you one from Fort Laramie, and I'll tell you all about the nice, ornery trappers and friendly bandits and mean, renegade Indians that are still on the outside while you're waiting for a hanging on the inside. <laughs> <laughs>
And now, here are the stars of Wild Bill Hickok, Guy Madison and Andy Devine. That's our Wild Bill Hickok story for today, folks. Andy and I will be back on Friday. You bet we will, Guy, and we're going to get mixed up in the darndest train robbery you ever heard of. It's a story called Treasure and Number Nine. Meanwhile, Andy and I also hope you'll remember to get Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops. Right. It's the great new cereal with the sweetening already on it. You bet it is. Andy and I think Sugar Corn Pops are great. So long. See you Friday. <laughs> Yes, sir. Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals, has brought you another exciting story of Wild Bill Hickok, starring Guy Madison and Andy Devine in person. Today's cast included Tony Barrett, Jess Kirkpatrick, Hal Gerard, and Jack Moyles. Our director is Paul Pierce. Music by Dick Orant. This is a David Heyer production transcribed in Hollywood. Don't forget to listen Friday, same time, same station, when Wild Bill Hickok fights to save the treasure of number nine. Now, this is Charlie Lyon speaking for Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops, the cereal with the sweetening already on it. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, the world's only talking cereal. And Kellogg's Corn Flakes, America's favorite ready-to-eat cereal. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day and thanks for listening.